worship this morning? Yes. Are you ready? I decided not to have service this morning. We're going to fast and pray for the Cardinals. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. We have our new quarterback, and we really got to pray for him. Josh Rosen era has started. So let us fast and pray. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> right? Lord, help him. Is there not a God in the Arizona Cardinals team? No, no, no. We're going to continue our series on 1 Corinthians. Amen. We've been, uh, we started this series three weeks ago. This is our fourth installment. And uh, so let's pray. Let's pray that we're going to get right into it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much again for the opportunity to get into your word. Oh, Father God, I ask for utterance this morning that you help me to speak what you want me to speak to speak your, your truth in love, to speak boldly as I ought to, but to speak the truth in love. Give us ears to hear what your spirit is saying through your word. And I thank you, Father, for your truth that transforms us and changes us from glory to glory to glory as we behold Jesus in your word. Amen and amen. So if I could give a quick paraphrase, 1 Corinthians is a book written to the, the believers in, in the city of Corinth, a church that Paul established and lived among them for 18 months. So he wrote them three letters. One, one is missing, but first and second are the ones that we have here. Amen? Now, uh, in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul dealt with, again, I like to say it, Corinth was like, it was like, it was like a Las Vegas type of place. Amen? You know, sin was rampant and, and, uh, and you know, what happens there stays there type of thing. You know what I'm saying? So, so but somebody, somebody spoke to Paul about things that were going on at the church after he left. And so Corinthians covers a lot of issues. But in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul tells him, look, I'm hearing that there's divisions among you guys. But first of all, I'm writing to you saints here. You guys are saints. You're holy. You're sanctified. You've been set apart. And he says, but listen, it's not about... It's not about Apollos or me, whatever. It's about Christ and what He did for you. He's your wisdom. He's your righteousness. He's your holiness. He's your deliverance. Focus on that. If you're going to boast, boast about that. And then in chapter 2, listen, it's also not about our wisdom and our power. It's all about Christ, the wisdom and the power of the gospel. It's a, in fact, listen, uh, God's given us a spirit so that we could f know the things that He has freely given to us. In fact, God's given us the mind of Christ even. Amen. So why boast? And then in chapter 3 and, and 4 last week, we covered the area where Paul's showing, look, all things are yours in Christ. Why are you comparing yourself amongst yourselves? All things are yours in Christ. You're blessed because you're in Christ. God put all the blessing in Christ, and when you accepted Christ, you got blessed. Amen. You're already blessed. Amen. Amen. You already won the lottery. You already hit the jackpot when you got Jesus. Amen? Now, we're in chapter 5, but now he's going to deal with some issues. And even though we're going to deal with, in, I, I, in, in this area, we're going to deal with sexual immorality and lawsuits in the church. Even though we're going to deal with this, understand technically really in chapter 5, really what it is is a pride issue here. What do you mean? Because look at this, chapter 5, verse 1. It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles that a man has his father's wife. Now I want you to keep an open heart as I share this morning because I'm going to get into some things you may not like but it needs to be talked about. See this whole theme of 1 Corinthians is God's grace at work. How does God's grace work within a church that is, that is dealing with issues? Amen? How does God's grace work in a church that's dealing with issues here? And, and so some things that Paul's going to say here may sound tough. And, and you'll see why he has to deal with it. So he says, It is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you, and such sexual immorality as is not even named among the Gentiles, that a man has his father's wife. Now, sexual immorality, that word sexual immorality, is, is the word, if you look at it in the King James, it says fornication. Amen? Now, 
Again, for the sake of people that might not, not might know, I think most believers here know, but I still feel I need to share it. What is that? That word fornication is the Greek word uh, where you get pornea. Uh, in fact, there's definition. It says illicit sexual intercourse, adultery, uh, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, intercourse with animals, intercourse with close relatives, incest in other words, and stuff like that. So it covers a whole gamut of sexual immorality. But isn't it something that the Greek word for, for, fornication is where you get the word pornea, where, you get, where we get the word pornography. And, 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 and pornography is a big, big, big issue in the body of Christ. A big, big, I don't, I don't talk too much about it and so forth because why? I believe the answer to it is getting a revelation of who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen? But yet we can't deny that there is an issue there. And there is a big issue. I remember hearing a story where uh, 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 there was a conference Billy Graham had in Washington, D.C. And, and uh, it's sad to say that the hotels there said that those that attended that conference, uh, <laughs> they had the highest percentage of people that were, attend that were staying in the hotels that were watching <laughs> porn on their TVs. And it was a Christian conference. See, and I'm not surprised. And I'm not, I'm not surprised, well, Pastor, why are you not surprised? Because the enemy will always try to destroy the church and what God is trying to do. And so, and so, and that's why, you know, hey, I came out of that stuff. So I, I, I've, throughout the, all my years, I've po spoken very boldly myself, my testimony of, of, I came out of that stuff. So I'm very cautious what I see and, and, and so forth, what I'm watching, you know, and so forth. Why? I don't want to give my flesh any, any inch or anything like that. Amen? Because I know where I came from. Amen? Just like my pa former pastor, Pastor David, his, his problem was drinking. Amen? You know, drinking and whatever. He would just see a billboard with Michelob, he says, and he would start sweating. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Pastor David used to say that. He would see a billboard and he start sweating like he, the drops of, you know. Why? Because that, that was the area where he was tempted. That's where his flesh was tempted. Amen? And so I have to be careful what I watch on TV, whatever. If it's too fleshly, I'll change the channel. Or my wife will warn me if a Victoria's Secret thing pops out. My wife will warn me like, don't look. <laughs> uh, turn your head. And so I'm just looking at her. Which is pretty nice too. And that's where I'm supposed to be looking. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, they say. Let me tell you, husbands, keep looking at your wife. The more, the more you look, the more you like. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a car commercial. Amen? I'm talking about your wife. Amen? The more you look at her, the more you'll, what? You'll desire her, the more you'll like her. Amen? Keep your eyes on your wife. Amen. That's what, I don't have time to get into Song of Solomon. But you've got to keep your eyes on her and so forth. But again, but the, it's a big issue, right? It's a big issue and a, and a problem, but the answer is Jesus. Get your eyes on Jesus, amen? Get your eyes on Him. And listen, young people, it, it, you know, you're gonna, you see a lot of flesh and out there, whatever. You've got to be careful what you're seeing, amen? And we're going to talk about it. We're going to get into later, and so hang, hang with me. We're going to try to get as far as we can today. I want to cover five and six. They're not long chapters, but I want to cover it. And so forth. But here's the issue in this story here. I mean, because this, is this stuff happening that I just mentioned? Uh, uh, adultery, for uh, homosexual. Notice, homosexual and lesbian. And pastor, you're not being politically correct if you mention that. Listen, I'm not here to be politically correct. I love people that are, that, that are doing that, but I, that doesn't mean I approve what they're doing. You love the sinner, but you still hate the sin because it, it, you know, it can cause issues and problems and, 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 and so forth, mess up their life, right? So, so, so we can still love people in our church that are going through stuff like that. We can still love them in spite, uh, you know, and, and so forth. But this issue here, though, let's keep reading. Notice what's happening here, verse 2. And you are puffed up. That's pride. There's an issue of, 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 of a person here in church that is blatantly, notice what happens. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he who has done this deed might be taken, what? Away from you. Amen. 
For indeed, as absent in the body, but present in spirit, I have already judged as though I were present him who has done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. That's pretty bold. Amen. That's pretty bold, isn't it? But here's the thing about sexual immorality, though. Uh, in Acts chapter 15, if you want to throw that to Acts chapter 15, verse 28 and 29, when the, when the church had the counsel about the difference between law and grace, are we saved by grace or by law or whatever? Remember they had that counsel in Acts chapter 15, verse 28 and 29. Remember they had that counsel? And here's the result of that counsel. And here it is. For it seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things. This is what the Gentiles, they were not supposed to be under the law. Here's though what they wanted the Gentiles to watch out that you abstain from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled, and from what? Sexual immorality. If you keep yourselves from these, you will do well. Notice, they didn't say to do the law. They said, Gentiles, here's what we want you guys to do. Here's the things that we feel that you need to. And what, what was included in there? Sexual immor immorality, right? In fact, if you go to chapter 21, uh, verse 25 of the same book, Chapter 21 of Acts, verse 25. But concerning the Gentiles who believe, we have written and decided that they should observe no such thing. He's talking about the law. They don't have to keep the law. Except that they should keep themselves from things offered to idols, from blood, from things strangled. Go on. And from what? Sexual immorality. Amen? So what's, what's the point? Sexual immorality was one of the four things the Gentiles were instructed to abstain from. Why? Because sexual immorality was wrong before the law. Come on now. Before the law was instituted, even before the law was given, sexual immorality was, was, was known as wrong. Right? Amen. And during the law, it was wrong. And guess what? Even under grace, sexual immorality is still wrong. So sexual immorality is wrong before the law came, under the law, and under grace. Amen. It's still wrong. Why? Because the, there's a lot of reasons why, but let me give you the spiritual reason why. It messes up the typology of Jesus Christ being the, bra, uh, the, the bridegroom and the church being the bride. So when you have men with men, that messes up that typology. Women with women, uh-uh. The relationship with God, the closest thing in, in earth of the intimacy that, that a couple can have, having sexual intimacy is the closest thing in the physical of what you can have spiritually between God the Father, I mean, Jesus, and you. It's just a picture in the natural of the intimacy you can have with Him. And so when that type is messed up, remember Moses did that with, with the rock. God told him, don't hit the rock, speak to the rock. He hit the rock twice in anger. Amen. He messed up. Jesus already died once. He's not going to be crucified again. Amen. And Moses didn't make it into the promised land because of that. Because you know why? He says, you're not describing me correctly to the people. And he wasn't showing grace to them. He called them rebels and whatever. Amen. And so this, mess, spiritually, you've got to understand, it messes up. The, so, so when you see today's society, uh, good is being called evil and evil is being called good. We've reached those days right before the Lord's return that good is being called evil and evil is good. Listen, I'm sorry, but, I, I, you know, it's not natural. If my wife were, were here, I'd come, come up here, honey, let me give you a kiss. That's natural. It's not natural seeing two men kiss or two women kiss. It's not. But today it's normal, it seems like. It's being shoved in our society. You know what I'm saying? And so forth. Now, now, if you have issues with it, I'm not here to condemn you. But you do need to know it is wrong. Amen. Because there's an answer to that. And I'm going to prove it from Scripture that you can be free from that. If, if you have. See, just, see, here's the issue with putting labels on somebody. Well, they're gay. Or they're a homosexual. Or they're a lesbian. That's a label. That's not you. That's a, especially if you're a Christian. That's a label. And that is not you. 
And that's what psychology does. It throws psycho labels at people. Well, I'm just an alcoholic. No, you, if you accepted Jesus, you were an alcoholic. You're not an alcoholic anymore. And the day you realize that, you'll begin to live free from alcoholism. Well, I'm just a homosexual. No, you're not. If you received Jesus, you were a homosexual. And the day you realize that you're the righteousness of God in Christ, you'll be... See, right believing will change your living. Amen. If your thinking is wrong, you're going to live wrong. Amen. Now, I'm not here to condemn you if you have thoughts like that. Because listen, I got caught up in pornography myself. Yes, I was looking for May and April and, and June and July and whatever. <laughs> I look forward to why because Ju July didn't satisfy so maybe August will be better <laughs> look I'm being blunt but I'm being truthful Amen. and the and the ones that are acting all holy like oh no, I wouldn't do that I yeah yeah right you know what I listen don't trust your flesh as much as you can throw it Amen. so I'm not here to judge you if you're doing these things because what us without Jesus we are capable of doing every one of these things Amen. that you see in here Amen. And I'm serious. Even young kids. Listen, young kids. Listen to me. I know the enemy can tempt you to tr you know, try something new and, and whatever and so forth and so on. There's young kids that are doing stuff with animals and stuff like that. Don't listen to the lies of the enemy. You were made to have a relationship you know, in God's time between a man and a woman. That's why God made Adam and Eve. And that's the way he designed it. And when that's thrown out of whack, it, it, it goes against God's plan. It goes against His type, typology that you see in Scripture. It just throws everything. And that's why you, no wonder people are so confused. And there's strife and envy and fighting. Amen? So, so, again, so again, but sad to say, verse 2 says, sad to say in today's society, sexual morality seems to be the norm now, but it is still wrong. But look at verse 5. In this extreme case, though, the pastor, he actually kicked, you know why he, do you know why Paul had him kick this person out of the church? Because the issue, more than sexual immorality, even though, yes, that's bad, was the pride issue. This guy was puffed up in pride, and he was flaunting it in the church. He was having sexual relations with his stepmom, and everybody in the church knew it, and he was acting like it was no big, no problem. Where, you know, he could have said, hey, I'm under grace, I can just do anything, whatever, no big problem. So if, if that were, were to continue, then that, that, that would be saying that, that under grace you can just do anything, that's fine, no, no problem, God will love you and whatever. No, 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 Paul, are you kidding me? The, the thing that Paul got so upset was because it was blatant, it was, he said, you guys are puffed up, thinking that, oh, it's okay, you know why? They were wimpy, they didn't want to deal with it. See, just because you walk, just because God's love is in you, you have to have love with discernment. God's love is in you, not, to, not for you to just do your own thing or whatever. You have to have it for discernment. Amen? Amen. Man, I'm, getting, I, I'm stuck here, but I've got to move on because I'm gonna, Scripture's going to explain it to you in just a little bit as we keep reading. So, so we're going to stay here a little bit longer. <laughs> oh, won't you stay just a little bit? Amen? Pastor, how can you be like that when you're talking about something so serious? Because that's just me. Amen? I, I'm talking about something serious, and I'll throw some things there. So like, <laughs> like Jesse DePlanis, he'll, he'll joke around. <laughs> and then, oh. Thank you, Lord. I got it. Amen? Because I'm trying to speak it in love, people. Because I care, and I love you guys, and, and, and especially you young people. Listen to me. What the world has to offer, it's a lie. It's a big lie. It's a big lie. It's, decep it's deception. It's, it's a lying. But let's, so, so what did he do? But pastor, what did he mean by the destruction of the flesh, whatever? Basically, he's, he's, he's got kicked out of fellowship. So, hope, so he would realize, oh, what I'm doing is wrong. Having sex with my stepmom. It's wrong. It's not right. Amen. Now, was the purpose for restoration? Yes. Yes, Paul said it was for restoration purposes. Not to kick him out to, and, to whatever, but it was for restoration purposes. 
Now this is an, now listen though, this is an extreme case because this guy was flaunting it. He was, it was like he was proud. The issue here is really pride. It was a pride issue. Um, you know, and you're seeing it today. Amen. You're seeing it in the society. What, they're proud now. Amen. They're flaunting it like if it's, you know. Oh, yes, amen. It's being flaunted. And that's the part that, uh-uh. Amen. See, it's different. No, listen, listen to me. It's different from a Christian that's honestly struggling with that issue. That's different. Amen. That's different. I've even heard Joseph Prince say that many times the, the message on God's grace isn't for you, Christian, that is wanting, like this guy. He said, nah, -uh. it's not, there's always going to be somebody that's going to take the message of the grace of God and use it to do their own thing. They're looking for an excuse to sin. And Joseph Prince said, no, no, no. This message of the God's loving grace is not for you that are wanting to take this message so you can just go do whatever you want and, 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 and then feel free. Joseph, I heard it from his own mouth. Several times he said it. Amen? So he's making it plain. That's not the purpose of the message. The grace of God will empower you to live free from that. It'll strengthen you and get you out of that. So see, I'm not talking to anybody in here. Anybody having sexual relations with their stepmom? If you are, ushers, get them. We're going to lay hands on them. And give them the left foot of... No, no listen. No, listen. This was a blatant thing here. And, and I think it was happening for a time. And, and why? Because Paul heard about it. So that means the guy was just blatantly doing it, having sex, and, and they knew it. The church knew it. Nobody was doing nothing about it. And it was put, what it was going to happen, it was that, hey, it's okay then. If he's having sex with his stepmom, then I can have sexual relations with somebody else here. What was going to happen? Like yeast, it was going to spread. And all of a sudden, the grace of God was going to be turned into licentiousness. So like, a famous person once said he had to nip it in the bud. <laughs> See, I'm not talking about, though, I'm not talking about your average Christian, which I think is very far in between. That person is very far in between. Few. It, there's always going to be one guy that's, you know what I'm saying? There's, there, there are people like that. There are wolves among the sheep. Amen. But I'm, and there's people that are professors but not possessors. But, but the rest of the, I think, sheep that are struggling, I'm not talking, see, because with me, when, when I was caught up in pornography, I loved God. I wanted to do God's will. I was struggling. So God's grace was grace towards, towards me. Because he knew I really wanted to be free from that. I didn't want to continue doing that. I was falling to the flesh. Amen? And listen, I know where that could go. Because you don't never get satisfied. Sin, will, you just keep, you want, you want more. You want more food. You want more lust. You want more money. You want a, better, a bigger house. It doesn't stop with sin. It doesn't stop with lust. It won't. You'll never be satisfied. That's why I have to go from April to June to June. It's crazy the thinking. It's like, but July might be better than June. Pastor, how could you talk like this? Because it's the truth. It's happening. It's happening out there. A lot of Christian men are involved in it. And listen, I'm here to tell you, you can be free from it. Amen. 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 You can be free from it. Okay, we got to move on. Verse 6. Your glorying is not good. See, he's dealing with their pride. Don't you know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Leaven represents yeast. How I many know you take yeast and put it in dough? What, 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 what does it do? It causes the dough to blow up. That's like, that's a type. So yeast or leaven is a type of sin. When it gets in you, what it causes you to... It can spread and cause you to blow up. Just like the bread blows up. That's what it does. It was going to blow up the church. It would have failed. The church would have failed. And listen, he says, but here's the good, look at this. Therefore, verse 7 Purge what? Purge out the old leaven that you may be a what? New lump. Come on now. Purge out. But you know what Paul puts it in other places? Put on the new man. In other words, put aside the old man and put on what? The new man. In other words, get rid of your old grave clothes and put on what? The grace clothes. Get rid of your old grave clothes and put on 
the grace clothes. Put on who you are. See, you're wearing the wrong style of clothing. Amen. If you're a believer and you're doing these things, it's like you're wearing, it's like, you know what? It's like you're wearing uh, clothing that's unbecoming. It'd be like if you're going to a wedding and you show up in shorts. Everybody's with suit and tie and you show up with shorts. Something like you show up as like, you, you kind of don't match. You know what I'm saying? That's how it is for a Christian that is living in sin and yet they're righteous on the inside. It's unbecoming. It doesn't fit you. Change your clothes. Get rid of the old grave clothes. and put. He's talking about conduct. And put on the grace clothes. Put on the real. Put on, on the outside what you already are on the inside. You're righteous and you're holy. If you would understand that, you'd be put on that on the outside. Amen. Now, but here's, there's so much good stuff here. Look at this. Therefore, purge out the old leaven. So put that old stuff aside that you may be a new lump. Since, listen, here's the truth right here. Since you are truly what? Unleavened. Oh, what is he saying? Your unleavened means there's no yeast in you. That means there's no sin in you. Amen. The reason you shouldn't be walking this way is because you're sinless. You're, you're right with God. You're the righteous. Do so you see that's good news right there? Amen. See the motive to walk free from that stuff is because you don't know who you are. When God dealt with sin in the Corinthians, He dealt with them getting the knowledge of who they were that will help you walk free. You're unleavened. In fact, can you put this verse for me in the message? I know I didn't have it in the notes, but I like the way it says it in the message here. Verse uh, 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 7. If you can, just throw it up there. Even if it's before it, we'll get to it. Put it up there, whatever section it is. I don't know if it's the whole section or whatever. Your flip and callous arrogance in these things bothers me. You pass it off as a small thing, but it's anything but, but that. Yeast, too, is a small thing, but it works its way through a whole batch of bread dough pretty fast. Look at the next verse. So get rid of this yeast. Our true, listen, here it is, your identity. Here comes knowing who you are in Christ. Your identity is like a flat and plain, amen. That means tortilla to me. That means you're as holy as a tortilla. No. Tortillas are awesome. Tortillas are from God. I'm as holy as a flat, plain tortilla. Notice the tortilla ain't bloated up. Sin's out of there. Amen? I was bloated, but then Jesus. Notice. Our trade is flat and plain, not puffed up with the wrong kind of ingredient. Come on now. The Messiah, our Passover lamb, has already been sacrificed for the Passover meal, and we are that unraised bread. We, woo! I'm already righteous. Pause. You see what he does? He, he goes back to who they are in Christ. He goes back to their identity. You are the very righteousness of God in Christ. That's why this shouldn't be happening. Do you see that? So even though he's bringing correction, notice, he puts, he puts it in love and goes back to, look guys, you're unleavened. You're holy. You're righteous. Amen. It's not you. It's not becoming of you. Amen? Amen. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Yes. Let's move on because we have a lot to cover. Uh, uh, verse, uh, therefore, therefore, verse 8, Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of what? sincerity and truth. See, the truth in love. His truth. What do you mean? But what truth, Pastor? The truth of who you are in Christ. The truth of who you are in Christ. See, if you'll focus on... You know how you get rid of the darkness in your life? You know how you get... You want to get rid of darkness in your life? Turn on the switch. Turn the light on. The way to get rid of darkness in your life is turn the light on. Who's the light? Jesus is the light in you. Amen? Amen? I think sometimes we, you know, we sing this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. We need more than that. I think we need, we need like a big torch. <laughs> this little torch of mine. It's going to burn everything in front of me. Right? <laughs> Amen? Because in the spirit, you're strong. You're righteous. You're holy. Amen? Let's move on. Verse 9. I write to you in my epistle, I wrote to you in my epistle not to keep company with sexually immoral people. Now see, he had written a previous letter about this and that letter got lost. 
So he's reminding them, I, I told you to stay away from sexually immoral people. Now, when he read that, the people thought, oh, that means I'm going to have to stay away from here. I'm going to have to stay away from, oh, oh, oh where am I going to go? Everybody's sinning. <laughs> right? Notice what he tells them. He says, verse 10, yet I certainly did not mean the sexually immoral people of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or idolaters since then you would need to go out of the world <laughs> in other words you can't avoid being around people that are sinning right you, they're all around you amen There's, they're, they're all around you can't avoid it right they're all around you but though notice what he says verse 11 but now I have written to you not to keep company with anyone named a brother who is what sexually immoral now notice he adds to the list so it's not, see, so he's not just trying to come against this guy that was committing incest. He, it was, he wasn't just pointing him out just to point him out. He was trying to bring something out. He was blatantly doing it. He was puffed up in pride. He was showing off like, look at me. I can do this. Nobody's going to bug me about it. I have every right to do this. No, 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 brother. No, man, you're wrong. You're wrong. And here's the issue, though. Now he brings up, notice, he brings up other things. Idolaters, covetous, uh, extortioners. Since then, he would need to go out in the world, but he says, anybody who is a brother or a sister who is sexually immoral or covetous or an idolater or a reviler or a drunkard or an extortioner, not even to eat with such a person. What is he saying? Again, he's given a comparison, like this guy that was having sexual immorality, you know, in, incest with, you know, having relations with his stepmom, something like that that was blatant and he was showing off. That type of person, he says, don't have fellowship with that person. Because why? Because then you are saying it's okay. He believes in grace too and he's doing that with a stepmom. Then that means you're sanctioning what he's doing. If you're fellowshipping with him, you're sanctioning what that guy's doing. Amen? And really what it really is referring to is an intimate fellowship. Not like you can't say hi to them or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Because you want to restore that person. You want to. So, so he's talking about building an intimate, friendly fellowship with that person whatever now listen listen to me again I'm not talking about Christians who are struggling in these areas and they, or they don't know who they are in Christ because there's some Christians that are struggling in this area and, and or they don't know the truth of who they are in Christ I'm talking about somebody like this guy that was prideful you know he, he was arrogant he was puffed up and saying that you know it seemed, that's different I'm not talking about your normal uh, person, Christian, that is struggling in these areas, whether it's homosexual, lesbian, homosexual, any of those areas. There are Christians, I believe, that are struggling in that area. Amen? Again, we, 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 we try to help them, pray for them, uh, get, get them to see who they are in Christ, because that's what's going to set them free. Amen? So I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about this person is puffed up, they're in pride, and they're coming to church, and they're showing it off, and they don't care. That's different. Because then if, if you give, then you're sanctioning what they're doing. Are you seeing the difference? Amen. Otherwise, Paul's saying, if you do that, that you're going to have to leave everybody because everybody's sinning. Right. <laughs> and notice, notice verse, uh, uh, verse 11. But now I have written to you not to keep company with, with anyone named a brother who is sexually immoral or covetous. Uh, let's go on, verse 12. For what have I to do with judging those who are outside? Do you not judge those who are inside? But those who are outside, God judges. Therefore, put away from yourselves the evil person. So basically what he's saying, Paul's saying, don't I or don't we as a church, if somebody, some like guys doing that like here in this church, don't we have the right to judge that? And say, no, 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 you can't do that. That's not right. Amen? You're not going to bring that stuff in here because there's, I have sheep in here who, who are very sensitive and if they see you doing that, then they're going to think, oh, that's okay. And then, and then they're going to go and fall into that sin, and then that's going to lead them into trouble and so forth. Because why? Because you thought. See what I'm saying? But please understand me. It's not your average Joe Blow Christian that is struggling in these areas. This is somebody that is arrogant, prideful. They're, they know what they're doing is wrong, yet they don't think it's, it's okay. I'm under grace. Now, let's move on. Chapter 6. Dare any of you have, now he gets into, into the area of should I, uh, how to deal with a believer uh, uh, who is uh, about suing, in other words. To sue or not to sue? To sue or not to sue? 
Verse 6, chapter 6, verse 1. Dare any of you having a matter against another go to law before the unrighteous and not before the saints? Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? How much more things pertaining to this life? Verse 4. If then you have judgments concerning things pertaining to this life, do you appoint those who are least esteemed by the church to judge? Verse 5, I say this to your shame. It is so that there is not a wise man among you, not even one, who will be able to judge between his brethren. Instead, they go to judge Judy. <laughs> That's basically what he's saying. Why are we going to the world? How come we can't handle it one by one here in the church? You got something against your brother, whatever, why can't you handle it in between? Instead, you go to, you know, Judge Judy or Judge Brown or whatever. Yeah, Pastor, but they pay me money. That's the reason you're doing it then. You know why they go to Judge Judy, right? They pay whatever they're going to pay whoever lost. They take care of it. That's why they go. Because if they lose the case, Judge Judy will, they're, they're, they give them the funds to pay off what they owe. That's why they go. So if you win, you win, praise the Lord. If you lose, you don't lose because Judge Judy's people are going to pay them. See, inquiring minds, inquiring, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> Verse 6, but brother goes to law against brother, and that before unbelievers. Now therefore, it is already an utter failure for you to ha have to go to law against one another. Why don't you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? Verse 8, no, you yourselves do wrong and cheat, you, and you do these things, and to your brethren. Now, I want to bring this up because this has been used, this, these verses have been used religiously. When Paul says that, the, that we could never sue anyone at all, is that true that we can't sue anyone? I'm going to tell you something. He's, and listen, if it's somebody between your brother or sister or your family member, they stole you some money, whatever, yeah, it's good to just let it go. Amen? It's good to let it go. But if, it's, if, you're, if, if somebody ripped you off in business in your car and they said they're Christian, but they ripped your car off, they ripped you off a deal or whatever and, and so forth, you have every right to sue them. Amen? It's not, Paul's talking about within the church, within your, your personal family. In fact, Joseph Prince talked about this, that there was a guy that, that was... Uh, that, that he was, they, you know, they sold so much money a month to different ministries and whatever. And a guy from India, he came in and, and he wanted to, uh, you know, he wanted, he had a need. So they were going to sow into his ministry. But Joseph said that something didn't, he didn't have peace in here, something. So he had his guys check it out. Well, he went to India and came to find out that, that this guy, it was a fake ministry. And they even pushed the, they had like a stage set up and whatever and pushed it and the stage fell down. It was fake. And guess what? And so he got back. Of course, he was upset about it. He says, you know what? He says, and they, tr they were trying to, you know, sue the guy for, and, and he goes, Pastor, why would you sue a, that? He said, ah, that's a wolf among sheep. That was a wolf. That wasn't a sheep. That was a wolf stealing and everything. And so he tried to take, take him to court, but the other churches wouldn't take him to court. So they couldn't hold anything against him. Because the other churches who had been ripped off didn't even tell Joseph in his church that this guy was ripping him off. Oh, we just, we just water under the bridge. We just forgave him. See, people, some Christians, we're too wimpy, man. We're, <laughs> that's love without discernment. Love without discernment. And so Joseph was upset. He says, man, I want to sue the guy. Because why? Why? Because that money isn't ours. It's the church's money. He was stealing the church's money. It's not my personal money where I can just, I ah, forgive him. No, it has nothing to do with that. That was church's money. And he was ripping the, his other churches. And he got upset with the other pastors. Why didn't you guys tell us? Well, that's water underneath the bridge. Yeah, but you, have, you were willing for us to get ripped off from him because you didn't say nothing. Because you didn't have the courage to say something. Uh, we we'll just forgive him. It's okay. It's, a, it's okay, brother. Is it water underneath the bridge? That's not real love. Real love will speak the truth in love. It's quiet in this Presbyterian church. Amen. Amen. Don't worry. I'll be singing a cute song in a little bit. You'll be happy. Amen. Amen. 
Are you seeing, see, see what's, what's happening? So, so listen, there's, there's rascals out there. You've got to watch it. So he's not saying you can't sue somebody that rips you off in business and whatever, especially if they're not a Christian. You have every right to. Amen? What he's talking about is, is, your, is, is within the body, within the you know, Christians, within and members, try to take care of that stuff in here, in-house, instead of going to law. So, it's, it'd be, yeah, it'd be dumb for somebody in here suing somebody else in the church here. Why can't we handle it here? Amen? We'll get some gloves on both sides and whatever. And, and the Come on, let's handle it right here. <laughs> Listen, like my dad said back in Mexico, we had no insurance. You crash another car, you both get out. Come on, man. <laughs> okay, I'll pay for your car. That's how you handle it, man. There was no insurance. It was my insurance. You're going to get some insurance right here. <laughs> right? It's <laughs> just the way it was, people. But do you see what he's saying? He's talking about in the body. Why can't you, hey, get a mediator. Let's work this thing out. And he's saying, look, if they, somebody in the, here cheated you, then, you know. Now, if you know they're not true Christians, they're a wolf, let us know. Call the wolf catchers. <laughs> Come on, we got to wrap this up. Let's, let's, let's go on. Let's go on here. So let's go, go on to, look at, but look at verse 9 though. Uh-oh, here's some good stuff. Please don't, don't check out yet. Cardinals haven't started. Verse 9. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? <gasps> Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Of God. That's pretty bold. Right? But who is he talking about though? Is he talking about a Christian that may be doing some of these things? Because he was writing to Christians. No. Here's the key. Here's the key. Here's the key right here. Look at the verse in chapter, verse 9. Do you not know that the what? The unrighteous. That word in the Greek Adikos, specific, you know what it means? Specifically heathen. So he's saying, he's talking about sinners, not Christians. It's the sinners who will not inherit the kingdom of God. And what do sinners do? They're fornicators. They're homosexuals. They're committing all these evil things. So he's, not, he's trying to remind them, look, you're acting like the people of the world. You're acting like the sinner. Sinners do these things. And you know those sinners, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Right? So you're acting like, like you're not, it's unbecoming. You you're, have the wrong lifestyle. Do you see that? So he's not talking about Christians that are doing these things or struggling in these things. He's talking about sinners. Those are sinners that are doing these things. But here's the next verse explains it clear. Look at the next verse. Come on now. Verse 11. And such were some of you. Notice, you were. So he was referring to sinners. This is what sinners do. Sinners sin. Amen? Righteous people do righteous things. Holy people live holy. Now you might mess up sometimes, but you're still holy. You're still righteous. But are you seeing what happened? And such were... Now, anybody who tells me, though, here's the thing, though. There's, there's people that will say, Pastor, they were born that way. They can't help it. They're, no, they were not born that way. How do you know, Pastor, they were not born that way? Because this verse tells me that such were some of you. That means to tell me there were some of these people back then that were homosexuals, that were lesbians, and that's what they were. And Paul says, such were some of you, and you're not that anymore. So that means to tell me, so somebody to tell me, I can't help it. This is just the way I was born. You're being deceived by the devil. That's a lie. That's a lie from the pit of hell. Because right here we have evidence of many others who were homosexuals, lesbians, extortioners, who were set free by Jesus Christ. There, and and I, come on, let's finish the verse. Look at this. Such were some of you, but you were what? Come on. You were washed. What? 
can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus so listen so if you're so don't those of you that are struggling in this area please listen to listen to my heart man I love you and I care for you because I know I've been through that I know how the struggle is I'm not talking to you as far as you know what I'm saying I'm not here to condemn you Paul's not trying to condemn you here he's saying look that when you do those things you're acting like them but it, that's such were some of you that's what you used to be you're not that anymore so you don't have to live that way anymore Amen. you can walk in freedom from that you don't have to live and what he's saying you don't have to live that lifestyle what it is is the lifestyle of what it is it's not you were born that way you, you listen to the lie of the enemy and, and you follow and anything you sow it's going to increase anything you sow you, it's going to increase and but pastor how come, how come he started desiring a, a man desiring a man because that thought came and uh, look people I'm just going gonna, gonna to be bold and I don't care because I can speak it because I'm free from it the guy who sold me pornography was a guy and the reason he was doing it is to have relations with me now you know why I preach grace so much I know where it leads to. I know the garbage it gets into. It, it, it keeps going. And if I had kept going down that path, who knows? I understand these people that are, that are molesting kids and whatever. Because that's where it leads to. Amen. So you've got to understand, when God called me to preach, I was like, how oh, can I? God, I can't do this. I'm very open about this, and, and I can be open about it because I'm free. Hallelujah. I'm free. God's grace has set me free. So when I preach about the love and the grace of God, you've got to understand I know where I'm coming from. I would not have chosen myself to be a preacher. I feel the least qualified to be doing what I'm doing. I understand what Paul says, I'm a chief sinner. I understand what he means. Amen. And if you leave this church because I, I mentioned that, bye. I don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. Because I know what Jesus did for me. I know what he set me free from. Amen. Amen. He was using the pornography as a way to get relations yep. and in my heart I knew that's not me something in here is like it's not me that's right. so I can see how people get deceived why through the flesh the flesh and that's why I'm here to tell you your flesh without Jesus is capable of doing that's why I don't trust my flesh one iota I don't trust it amen I don't trust it. Amen. But listen, such were some of you, but you were what? Washed. But you were what else? <laughs> Woo! But you were sanctified means you were set apart. Oh, so, uh, can you imagine though when I got saved and I got the revelation and, and Jesus came into my life, I'm there on my knees and, and Lord, oh, thank you Lord for cleansing me from all. Oh. Now you know why I took a cross and went down the street now Mirage preaching the gospel. Because I was a sinner saved by the grace of God. Amen. Amen. And I know I've heard I've heard from others that you know, Pastor, I was tempted in that. I've heard other Christians when they were young, they were tempted in the area of the same sex. Because the enemy put people in and, and tried to deceive them or whatever. It's a life, you know, it, it was a deception. It's a deception. See, the enemy knew what I was going to be doing for Jesus. So from the beginning, he was trying to destroy my life. But notice the next part. Such were some of you, but you were sanctified. Here it is. And you were justified or made righteous in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Now look at verse 12. All things are lawful for me, right? Paul says, he's true under grace. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. Not all things are helpful. Amen. 
All things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. And then he goes on, uh, he says, he says uh, all things are lawful for me, but, not, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. See, your body is not for sexual morality, but for the Lord. See, God didn't make, see, God didn't make your body. That's one thing that, that you've got to understand. When He created your body, He's saying, that's the, a sin against our body is tough because why? God made your body for Him, yeah. not for yourself. He made it for Him. Your body was designed for Him. Amen. And that's why the enemy hates a, a, a marriage between a man and a woman because why? That's a beautiful type of Jesus being the head and uh, the, the bride, you know, bridegroom and, and the body being his bride. Just like he's also the head and we're his body. Amen. 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 And, and, so, and so notice what he says. He goes on and says, and, 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 and he says, and God both raised up, verse 14, the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Amen. In other words, God's give, honored you by giving you the body you have. Amen? He's honored you by giving you this body that you have. And, and, and so, and, so and, look at, and look at what he says. Finally, he says, he says, verse 15, Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. That's how, you, that's how much you're one with Jesus that he's saying that your body here is a member of of Christ. Amen. You're part of the body. Your body is a part of Christ. Christ is a part of you. That's how much God sees you in Christ. Hang on, I'm almost done here. Do you not know that your body are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become what? You know what's happening in society? People are having sexual relations here, there, everywhere. And, and what's happening is, 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 is they're gluing themselves with others. Look at verse 17. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Amen. That word join, you know what that word join means? To glue together. To glue together, to cement, to fasten together, to fasten firmly together, to cleave. Remember, you're supposed to cleave when you get married. Husband and wife are supposed to cleave to one another. And so what is he saying? He says, so, so when people are having sexual relations with other people outside of marriage, they're actually in what? It's like, you can't take, it's like taking two pieces of paper, putting glue on them, and putting them together. And, then, and, and, and if it's just a one night stand or whatever, <clears throat> it's being pulled apart and what happens? You're not the same. Just like you can't pull two pieces of paper apart, some pieces are going to cut here. Some, and no wonder there are all of the people with soul troubles, yeah. problems in their soul. Why? Because they're gluing here and then, uh, and then gluing over here and then, uh, and all of a sudden, I'm confused. I'm so confused. You know, listen, you can, that's why God designed uh, uh, sexual relations between a man and a woman. Why? Without commitment. If there's no commitment, there can be true intimacy. Amen. All that's fake. It's just, a, but yet there's a, there's a gluing that's happening. And torn, and torn, you know, like the torn between two lovers. <laughs> Feeling like a fool. Yeah, it is foolish. <laughs> Loving both of you is breaking all the rules. Remember that stupid song? <laughs> torn between two. Come on. Yeah, that's what's happening, torn. You're... Amen? Why do you think there's some women that are staying with guys that are beating them up? Why would they stay with somebody that's beating them up? That, and they couldn't, you know, right there. I know I'm taking longer, but I got to get this out. 
Yet I'll tell you, this will change your life. And here's a, here's a testimony of God. God set me free from that garbage. Woo! Oh, thank you, Jesus. Amen? Amen? I only desire my wife, my woman right here. Let me tell you that. Amen? Sorry, guys. You're not desirable. In fact, you're ugly. <laughs> Right here is my beauty, right here. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Amen. I said that right here is my beauty. Amen? Amen. 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 I'm telling you. Amen. Let's go, honey. That's no, okay. <laughs> I got to, okay, wrap it up. But listen, so here's, here's the key, though. Then what, here's the answer. What should I do, Pastor? What shall I do? Verse 18. Flee! Flee! Run away is what it means in the Hebrew. What did Joseph do when the lady was tempting him? Lie with me. Lie with me. Day after day she was tempted. Lie with me. When she grabbed his coat, whatever, and Joseph said, I'm strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, woman. I can handle you tempting me like this woman. No! He ran! <laughs> Flee from temptation! Run away when you're being tempted. Don't act like you're strong enough to handle it. You can on your own. You better run. Hey, baby. No, 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 baby. No, me. Run. I'm talking to you women, too. Some guy, you know, all of a sudden he puffs up with his, you know, what I need. Chica. What are they? Chica, chica. You want to be my chick? <laughs> Ka? <laughs> Amen. Run! Flee! Listen, here's what it, here's what it means in the Strong's. It, it's F-Y-O-O-G-O. For you go. You need to, for you go. You need to go. For you go. To run away literally and figuratively by implication to shun, by analogy to vanish, escape, and flee away. I like what, I, I think, uh, uh, I think, uh, oh yeah, here, here's what, let me read something to you. God wants us to run away in our thought life. But here's what I'm saying though. Here, let me throw this in here. I'm not just talking about physical temptation in your thought life too. Yes. Amen. When, when that thought hits you, that's not, again, go back to who you are. Nuh -uh. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am a new creation in Christ. And, and, and in fact, here's what Andrew Wilmer, I like what he says. Sin is easier to avoid than it is to resist. Amen. So avoid it. Amen? Don't go to that party if you know there's going to be stuff happening that you know you don't need to be around. Why? Because otherwise you might slip in into darkness. You don't want that. <laughs> You don't want that. I was slip. You know, you don't want that. Amen. I told you I was going to bring the music back so we can <laughs> liven it up before we leave. So finally, and I mean it finally. <laughs> Listen, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Why? You're the body of Christ. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. See, your body is the temple. God chose to put His Spirit in your body. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. That right there. Think about that. That's who you are. God dwells in me. I'm the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the more you understand that, the more you'll walk free from whatever it is that you're dealing with. I know I went longer than usual. And... I think we all needed it to hear it. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? Yes. But I love it because Paul's like, he, he, even though he, he brought correction, 
Yet he ends it, hey guys, this, this is where you, this is what some of you are like this, but you've been washed, you've been what, sanctified, and justified, or in other words, made righteous. You're not that anymore. Amen. And the more you understand that, you'll walk free. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word this morning, Father God. And listen, I want... If, if you've been going through stuff like what I mentioned or anything like that, and you need somebody to talk to, well, I'm here. If you need to talk to someone, or Pastor Lucy's here, or every one of our leaders, if you know if that's something you need to talk about and whatever, listen, we're not, we're here, we're not here to judge you. <laughs> listen, I can't judge. I, I've been through stuff that, you know, if it wasn't for the grace of God, I wouldn't be here. So, so you know what I'm saying? And so, and so you've got to understand, when I preach about grace, there, I know what I'm talking about. He poured his grace on me. And so when somebody tells me, oh, you preach too much on grace or whatever, I'm like, you know what? I don't care what you say because I know what he did for me. Amen. I cannot but help but preach on his love and grace for what he did for me. I can't stop. So, Father, I pray for anyone here that's been hurting, that's going through some of these things, that's struggling. If that's you, if you're struggling, has bowed, eyes closed. I don't want nobody looking around. I want to pray for you. If you're struggling in these areas, Father, I pray for anyone that's struggling in any one of these areas that we mentioned, and not just in sexual morality, Lord, but in all the other areas that Paul mentioned. Father, I believe that your grace is greater. You said in your word that sin will not have dominion over us because we're not under law, but under your grace, under your favor, and under your strength and ability. And I pray, Father, that you would strengthen this person, Father, this precious brother or sister that's struggling in those areas. Lord, give them a fresh illumination and revelation of who they are in you. And I bind you, Satan, and all your evil lights that's been messing with their minds and their souls. I rebuke you and command you to leave them alone in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray that you'd heal those that have been hurt, those that have been victims, Father God, of, so, of these things, Lord, that you would heal their hearts, that you would minister to them. Maybe they were molested in the past, but Lord, your grace is still greater than what they've been through. Your grace, your love is still greater. You, Father, in Jesus, we're not ashamed anymore. We are righteous and we are holy. And I thank you for strengthening that person too, Father, and ministering your love and grace to them. And I thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, as they just cry out to you that you're healing their hearts. In Jesus' name.